Joss Ackland, a legendary actor known for his distinguished career spanning over six decades, recently celebrated his 95th birthday. Join us as we celebrate the life and accomplishments of this incredible actor and look back at his most memorable roles. Joss Ackland is an esteemed British actor with a remarkable career encompassing over 100 films, countless plays, and numerous television shows. He was born February 29, 1928 as Sidney Edmund Jocelyn Ackland in North Kensington, London. After honing his skills at London's prestigious Central School of Speech and Drama, the young 17-year-old Ackland embarked on his professional journey, making his stage debut in The Hasty Heart in 1945. His first film appearance, albeit uncredited, was in the Oscar-winning thriller Seven Days to Noon, directed by John and Roy Bolting. His credited debut came two years later in a supporting role in 1952's Vernon Sewell's Ghost Ship. But it would be several years before he returned to the silver screen, as he focused on refining his craft in regional theater companies during the late 40s and early 50s. In a surprising twist, Ackland left the world of English theater in 1955 to manage a tea plantation in Africa, an experience that likely influenced his celebrated performance in White Mischief over two decades later. During his two-year African sojourn, Ackland not only penned plays but also served as a radio disc jockey. In 1957, he returned to England and joined the renowned Old Vic Company, reigniting his illustrious acting career. Between 1962 and 64, Ackland took on the role of associate director at the Mermaid Theatre. Following this, he mainly performed in London's West End theatre scene, where he gained recognition in musicals. Some of his standout roles include Captain Hook in Peter Pan and Juan Perón in Evita. He also impressed audiences as Falstaff in Shakespeare's Henry IV, parts 1 and 2 as well as Captain Shotover in Shaw's Heartbreak House. Throughout the 60s, Ackland's film appearances increased, with his movie career as a character actor taking off in the 70s and flourishing in the 80s. Remarkably, his career showed little sign of slowing down in the 21st century, even as he entered into his 70s. Some of his most notable performances include his role as C.S. Lewis in the BBC TV production of Shadowlands and as the villainous South African character Aryan Rood, in Lethal Weapon 2. A proud father of seven children, Ackland once referred to them as his hobby during a 1981 interview. He was honored with the title of the Commander of the British Empire on December 31, 2000 as part of the New Year's Honors List. Family Memories and Tragedy At age 23, Ackland married 22-year-old Rosemary Kirkcaldy on August 18, 1951. Both actors, the couple fell in love while performing together on stage in Scotland. As Ackland's career was still blossoming, they initially faced some challenges. In 1954, they moved to Malawi, where Ackland managed his tea plantation for six months, before deeming the job too dangerous. They subsequently relocated to Cape Town. There, Ackland and Rosemary secured stable acting roles, but after two years, they returned to England. Over the course of their 51-year marriage, Ackland and Rosemary raised seven children, welcomed 32 grandchildren, and cherished eight great-grandchildren. Although his acting career often took him to distant locations, Ackland remarked that he and Rosemary were rarely separated. Tragedy struck in 1963 when their house and barns caught fire. Rosemary managed to save their five children but sustained a broken back jumping out the bedroom window. Doctors predicted she would miscarry and never walk again, but she defied the odds, giving birth and eventually walking after 18 months of treatment at Stoke Mandeville Hospital. In a heartbreaking turn of events, however, their eldest son Paul passed away from a heroin overdose in 1982 at age 29. Later in 2000, Rosemary was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. MND encompasses a group of conditions that impact nerve cells in the spinal cord and brain. While the exact cause remains unknown, Joss suspects that complications from a 1998 operation on Rosemary's lip may have played a role. Despite her inability to walk, the couple continued to travel and maintain a loving relationship. When Rosemary could no longer eat on her own and required tube feeding, Joss made sure she still received her favorite foods and champagne. And as her ability to communicate diminished, they resorted to smiles and written notes. When she could no longer write, Joss held the pen for her. Rosemary encouraged Joss to keep working. During the filming of a movie in Canada, their extensive family stepped in to provide support. Rosemary accompanied Joss on the trip, and family members took turns helping out. 
Sadly, Rosemary passed away in 2002, two years after her diagnosis. Before her death, she granted Joss permission to publish her diaries. He devoted six years to editing them, explaining the process helped him feel closer to her. Once the book was completed, he faced a profound sense of loneliness. The actor, who was 82 at the time, finally recalled how Rosemary used to listen to his lines, take notes, offer critiques, and provide support. He felt her presence every time he walked on stage. Joss now spends much of his time at their home in Clovelly, Devon. His daughter Tony and her large family also resides there, and Rosemary is buried on the property. Looking back on some movies With over five decades of experience, it's no surprise Joss Ackland has developed a discerning eye for distinguishing the exceptional from the mediocre when it comes to acting. In a recent interview, the then 73-year-old actor candidly expressed his dissatisfaction with many of his own performances, referring to them as an awful lot of crap while criticizing the general quality of drama. Despite being typecast as a villain throughout much of his career, Acklin considers himself to be his own favorite actor. Though he takes pride in films like The Hunt for Red October, he acknowledges that he has appeared in a number of less-than-stellar productions. He admits the primary motivation for these was financial, revealing a pragmatic side to his illustrious acting career. He mentioned being part of Mad Dogs and Englishmen, a film featuring Liz Hurley, which he acknowledged as being dreadful and deserving of the harsh criticism it received. He also cited his involvement in Passion of Mind with Demi Moore, admitting that he took the role due to financial needs despite the terrible script. While he found Moore to be decent, he did not consider her particularly bright or talented. He went on to confess that he's so mortified by many of his own performances, he sometimes claims they were the result of dares such as his cameo in a Pet Shop Boys video. In a Radio Times interview, he shared how embarrassing the experience was, with even seven-year-olds mocking him on the street. He also expressed his frustration with the predictability and repetitiveness of action movies, lamenting the overused tropes of car chases and villains dying multiple times. Letter to the World In 2020, Acklin shared a poignant message with the world through his participation in Letters Live. As part of an event series that honors the timeless impact of written correspondence, Acklin penned a letter to the world, delving into themes of loss, love, and the shared human journey. At 92 and living in self-isolation, he reflected on the COVID-19 crisis and the challenges faced by society. He reminded us of a time when neighbors cared for one another and people connected on a deeper level. With his heartfelt and candid narrative, Acklin underscored the importance of treasuring the people we hold dear and the memories that unite us. His letter serves not only as a tribute to the enduring influence of written communication, but also a poignant encapsulation of a life well lived. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Joss Ackland? Let us know in the comments section below.